Well, there's growing confusion over Queensland's attempts to tinker with the state's gun controls. The gun lobby last month welcomed an announcement that the state government was setting up an advisory panel to look at ways of cutting red tape for firearm registration. But after strong criticism from the Queensland Police Union, the government is showing signs of backing down. And now the organisation representing Commonwealth and Olympic pistol shooters is warning against any wide-ranging changes. Peter McCutcheon reports. The ranges are now open. Shooters may commence firing. Everybody has got the, uh, or think that it's dangerous and uh, we're rednecks, you know, we're out to shoot people and all that. We're out here, like anybody else, to just come out on a day to do a, a, a sport that we love. It's a weekday morning at the Ipswich and District Rifle Club. There's plenty of room out here on Brisbane's Western Fringe for a growing club that now boasts more than 2,000 members. I think shooting is making a, a, a resurgence, yes. I, I, you know, the number of members that are coming into the sport is quite encouraging. The number of very junior members coming into the sport is quite encouraging. And as the number of shooters increase, so does their potential political clout, with Queensland's new police minister announcing plans to cut so-called weapons red tape. We've got to make sure that uh, people who are doing the right thing don't get treated like second-class oh, citizens. Oh, oh. But this sort of rhetoric has the gun control lobby deeply worried. We are seeing some watering down of laws, particularly over time since the Port Arthur massacre. The 1996 Port Arthur massacre resulted in 35 deaths and an overhaul of Australia's firearm controls. More than half a million weapons were destroyed as the state and federal governments made it much harder to buy and keep guns. Well, I think the knee-jerk reaction to Port Arthur you know, was a tremendous tragedy to the country, but um, I got blamed for something that was nothing to do with my sport. Alan Walsh has been shooting for nearly 50 years and still resents the firearms crackdown. He's one of thousands of shooters complaining about long waits for new permits, licence renewals and all the paperwork needed to pursue their passion. Over the last five years, uh, it's simply become more and more uh, difficult um, to, to comply with for individuals through the administration. Delays are getting greater and greater. It's really becoming uh, onerous to the point of, of being ludicrous. So a new police minister has adopted the can-do mantra of the LNP government and promised to make life easier for legal gun owners. Once people have set that high standard already, then it's incumbent on any government, and particularly this government, to make sure we have an efficient and effective process to deal with those applications. But trying to work out exactly what this means has got the LNP government into trouble. The problem was the minister's original media release which announced an advisory panel made up solely of gun lobbyists and organisations and also quoted calls for some wide-ranging changes. The current firearms licensing legislation and system is not evidence-based. It is misdirected, unwieldy, costly, error-ridden and rapidly becoming unworkable. There were immediate and furious objections from the police union which saw nothing wrong about making it difficult for civilians to get access to firearms. And while the police union was belatedly offered a place on the advisory panel, other firearm interest groups were also feeling left out. I was concerned when I saw the panel. We don't really see that the, there's a great need to make it easier to make our own a firearm in our, in our discipline and in our sport for Category H. Michelle Sandstrom is the president of Pistol Shooting Queensland a competition-focused sporting group which has Olympians as members. While some in the firearm community complain about undergoing a police check before even joining a club like this, Michelle Sandstrom isn't fussed. So red tape isn't necessarily always bad? No, it's not always bad at all. No, no. It can actually work in your favour, to be honest. Pistol Shooting Queensland does want quicker processing of paperwork and is asked to be on the weapons advisory panel but the request has so far been declined. Now, the Queensland Government argues its rethink of firearms policy is not only about streamlining gun purchases. We've got people who are law-abiding, 
gun owners who jump through hoops, and yet we've got criminals carrying concealed handguns mm. and sort of shotguns that we need to toughen up on, and that's what we're going to do. But a potential problem with this good guys and bad guys approach is that the real world can be more complex. Although the data is patchy, the Australian Institute of Criminology believes there is a link between the legal and illicit markets. Handguns are the most problematic, with the theft of legal weapons like this one making up nearly half the illegal handgun market. So an increase in the supply of legal weapons comes with some risk. There is the chance um, that more firearms are going to be stolen and are being moved uh, into, the, into the illicit market. A potential, I can't say how big or small that would be, um, we'd be purely speculating of firearms moving into the illicit market. Many in the firearms community say the Queensland Government is sending mixed signals about how far it wants to go with changes to gun regulations. And gun control lobbyists are on the lookout for any national precedents. Well, I hope those developments don't uh, infiltrate other states. Uh, it's uh, appalling that uh, we have a committee established that is stacked with uh, gun lobby uh, advocates. But the Sporting Shooters Association sees this as an opportunity to be free of the shackles of overregulation. And it's disappointed to see signs of a backdown by allowing police union involvement. While I have no issue with the police, um, they actually have been the ones in charge of the legislation for the last 15 years and it's under their tutelage that it's actually, you know, um, almost on the brink of collapse. 